Welcome to In Focus Town Talk. We are so pleased to have town manager Melissa Origi from the town of Plymouth here today. Welcome, Melissa, and you have some breaking news for us. Um, we hear that you're going to be leaving your position has, uh, a little bit earlier. So can you talk about that? Yeah, just, yeah, just a little bit earlier. I had approached the board in June and said, you know, maybe it's time for a change. Um, you know, we had had Selectman Joyce sort of board abruptly. We have a charter commission that's doing a lot of work right now. It's been a very you know, tense year. There's been a lot of things that have gone on. And I just, I love Plymouth. But I thought maybe um, it might be a nice opportunity if I give the board a whole year notice so they have plenty of time to do what they need to do for a transition. Uh, I wonder if we could work that out. So I had approached the board in June, and I'm really happy to say that they were incredibly supportive. Um, I issued a press release today. I know that there were a ton of rumors are out there when people would keep seeing executive session and you know negotiations with the town manager. But honestly, I... I don't know how to stress this enough, Julie, it was all good. I mean, it really, it's positive for me. Um, I'd love to wrap up projects for the next year. I'm delighted that it can be a little bit like Gary Maestas, that I can give a whole year's notice to help with that. I know I don't have that popularity rating as I did, but this is, um, this is a wonderful thing. It's a great town, and I know they'll find somebody uh, that will be happy to fill, fill my shoes and take over the reins. Wow, big shoes to fill. Now, you've been with the town since 2004, correct? You were assistant town manager, and then you've been town manager since 2012? Yeah, so I've been the permanent town manager since 2012, but I did a couple acting stints um, as as once when Mark left and once when Mark Stankevich left. Um, so I've been doing this, you know, it's, it's a tough, fun exciting, demanding job. Yeah. Um, and I will have been the town, the permanent town manager for 10 years. And right. I think that's a great run. Right. Good for you. Good for you. Well, we wish, obviously, we wish you wonderful luck in your future and you won't need the luck. You'll have a great time. Uh, and maybe some, some time <laughs> off for a little while would be, would be great. Um, let's talk nice. about uh, COVID. COVID in Plymouth. It's, it's back a little bit. Uh, what, what are the new precautions? What are the new <sighs> restrictions? So the variant is going up. You've heard our public health director and our board of health chairman, they've been really active in releasing information about what is happening with um, COVID positive cases right now. It was a real thing to do because I know how sick people were of the masks. And it was, we had unanimous support from the select board to go back to at least wearing your mask when you come into the municipal buildings um, yeah. where you're doing town business. So the employees will be masked, the public will be masked. So one of the first things when I was walking in this morning, somebody said to me, well, how are you going to enforce it? I mean, we're not taking a policing aggressive approach. If somebody doesn't wear their mask, we'll ask them to put it on. If things get uncomfortable, I've told the staff they can reach out to me or the assistant town manager, we will come join them. Uh, but at the end of the day, as long as the employee feels safe, uh, we're trying to keep the public keep some distancing, then of course we will wait on the customer. But, um, and I hope that it doesn't get to the point where we have to be even stricter than that. Right, right. And updates obviously will happen, they're probably daily. Um, I'm sure the, the health department is daily in touch with the state and the CDC. And you will, the town does a really good job of messaging what is new, what is next, what, what do we need to do? So you will keep us updated, no doubts. Um, thoughts about the fall town meeting, which is scheduled to be on um, October 16th, which is a Saturday. What are going to yeah, be some you know, of the, the big things? the fall town meeting is going to be yeah, it's going to be a great town meeting, I think. Now, at this point, we uh, had been working with the moderator and, and PAC TV and looking at a hybrid option. People could either be in person or they could be virtual. They would have to make the decision on which they wanted to be. Uh, it's a couple of weeks prior to the town meeting. But I don't know if what's happening right now, COVID numbers will change that, and it may end up being all virtual. Uh, we still, I think we need a little more time to make that decision. But you will have some um, articles that will get quite a bit of debate at this upcoming town meeting. We are going to have some, hopefully, collective bargaining agreement solved. Uh, the schools have made a lot of progress and the town has made some progress with the firefighters and we're meeting with the, some of the other unions. You're going to have uh, projects this upcoming town meeting. 
um, that range from everything in the DPW, a couple of bridge projects, to um, potentially looking at the wall on Water Street and doing some work there, and construction at the fire station. Our commitment to continue to improve our aging facilities has been solid for the last three years, and you'll see that again at this town meeting. Um, to that, we're going to have some smaller items, but that is still could get some debate. Little Red Schoolhouse revolving fund, setting up a revolving fund for there, looking at some dedicated funding that would go towards facilities again, as well as the health department has been working like crazy on regulations for short term, or I think it's a bylaw for short term rentals. Yep. And they had unanimous approval of what they're bringing forward to fall town meeting. Great, um, excellent. Okay, and I'm sure more things will come um, as they enter the warrant. Um, what about ARPA funds? Can you just explain what they are and what they can be used for and what we have them earmarked for? So that um, America Recovery Rescue Recovery Plan Act, I think that's the acronym, um, they'll be providing communities with quite a bit of money. I mean, at the end of the day, between money that will come directly to Plymouth and money that will be filtered through the county government and available to us if we have viable projects, it is around $20 million. Now, in my opinion, that's a huge amount of money. But when it comes to projects, that can go quickly. Now, any project that we, or anything that we use that money for, um, has to meet certain criteria. So there will have to be an application process. There will have to be backup documentation. There will be a full audit of Plymouth Finances after that and what we spent it on. So the finance director and I are being very careful looking at what the requirements are before we put projects forward. Mm -hmm. And the select board really wants to be engaged, which I think is a good thing. Uh, so they any project that um, would be eligible for ARPA funds, that we apply for ARPA funds. Right now, they have approved um, work at the airport wastewater treatment plant. They uh, are amenable to updating what's called our SCADA system and has to do with our water distribution system. And um, there's one more project that they just approved that we're moving forward to. I'm drawing a blank right now on that. So those three projects will happen. And then, I'm sorry, it was the fire communication tower. Then in addition to that, department has submitting sort of a hold list mm -hmm. of things they will be looking at applying for ARPA funds for. A portion I mentioned earlier, the water street and looking at um, redoing the piping underneath Water Street. So that will be one of the projects potentially we will apply for. We have some IT upgrades. We have some cybersecurity issues. We have, um, somebody mentioned cemetery expansion, although I'm not sure that would be eligible. So there really is a lot of potential for projects that we could have done. Uh, Camelot sewer extension is an important one. And then somebody just brought up Brewster Garden Stairs. Those need to be re to me could have a very strong economic development component for tourism. So we'll see. We'll see as we get closer to the back, the background work we do in the costs of each of these projects. Because just what I mentioned to you right there for the list is well over. Well over. Yeah. Would be available. Yeah. Now do this is it the select board that decides or do they bring their um, recommendations to town meeting? No, the select board is able to decide on this. Okay. So as staff and as the town manager, I will make a recommendation to them. If they endorse it, we'll move forward with the process. Perfect, great. Okay, that's wonderful. And lastly, the um, FY23, it sounds weird to say 2023 budget. Um, what is that looking like and what are, what are your thoughts about it? So the FY23 budget, I, you know, People like to think that the budget is very complicated from year to year, but it's not. If you add service, you have a new initiative, that's clearly. Otherwise, the budget, budgets, um, you know, with what we give for service provision, they remain the same year to year with, of course, increases due to salary changes or contractual increases. But this year, I think it's going to be pretty interesting, the process is, because the board has said if there is a demand for services by the public, we have to figure out a way to do that. So we're looking at increasing staffing in the collections office, potentially increasing staffing in the cemetery as we look to expand the cemeteries, increasing staffing in IT, in the building department, expanding the sticker, sticker program, 
them, looking at potential options for, does Plymouth start to do seaweed removal on all our beaches? Do we offer discounts? Uh, the board just approved a climate planner position. So as I list out all the potential new initiatives, um, you know, real change to the budget this year. And you know what that means. That means there'll be quite a bit of oversight and looking at details by the advisory finance committee meeting and probably debate on town meeting four. Sure. Now, I think we'll get a better handle why 23 budget will look like once the board officially sets their goals and they may have to trim down this list a little bit that's in my town manager's report on the sort of fy 23 kind of ending list yep. because i don't think we would be able to do all of it in one year gotcha okay um when is the actual budget finalized when does it get completely finalized well, we start to build it in the fall. I believe that the so my town manager's recommended budget goes to the select board in December. And then the select board need to send their budget to the finance committee yeah. before January because they'll start or right around January because they'll start their work then. Okay, for the for spring of next year. This is it all just it happens so fast. It just comes up and mm -hmm. comes up. Um, we do have an election coming up a week from Saturday for the um, the open select board seat, a special election. And the last thing is the charter uh, commission is, is ongoing there. They've already had quite a few meetings. Um, anything else you want to absolutely accomplish before you step down as town manager? Oh, so I've been putting together a list. One of my favorite things to do, me and my list of things that I would love to accomplish before I leave over the next year. I can't reveal that yet because I need to do a little more work on that. Mm -hmm. But I'm also going to leave a list that I was never able to get to, but that I think is really important to the town for the next town manager, because there are some things that long run for Plymouth. It would be nice if someone is able to dedicate some to it. Some of them are as small as the projects that I've talked about before uh, on PAC TV, looking at this downtown area and a historic area and making sure that we preserve some of those little cut throughs and yeah. paths that are down in that area by installing a beautiful Plymouth town seal right into the ground in front of it, into the sidewalk uh, embedded there. So we don't lose those historic little trails as they meander through that area. And some of the projects are much larger, which is um, what I had spoken to former selectman Anthony Shenna about, which is establishing what other towns don't have, which is a set procedure for nonprofits to contribute to the tax base in some manner, whether yep. that is through a payment or through service provision. I think that would be wonderful for Plymouth. Yeah, I know we do that at PAC TV. We do a, um, a SILET, which is a right. contribution in lieu of taxes. Um, because we, we, we get to take advantage of all the services that the town offers, so we gladly um, worked that out with you years ago. So, um, yeah, I think you're, you're, you're right on on that one. Well, you have 11 months to get a lot done, and um, we're thrilled to have you here. This month we'll have you, you continue on with your Truth Be Told um, show every week, which is wonderful. Your town manager's reports are so comprehensive. I personally love them. I'm amazed at how much crosses your desk in the course of a week. It just... It's mind-boggling. Thank you, Melissa Origi, so much, and we'll see you next month.